All right, welcome to uh, episode five, the spring 1915 turn of my Paths of Glory playthrough. It's been a while since I've gotten to this, just because I've been doing uh, a lot of stuff with Empire of the Sun, kind of been rolling through that one, so uh, we're going to get back into the swing with this one. I try and do one episode, one episode, but I've been doing a lot uh, with Empire of the Sun, so if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. Uh, we can take a look at the hands now. It'll be the Central Powers to uh, get us going, I think. We'll take a look at the Allied hand. They have Russian reinforcements and Putnik uh, combat card alongside air superiority and Russian guards. So um, a lot of this focuses on the Eastern Front. Uh, Russian cavalry, which may or may not come out. Italian reinforcements and cloak and dagger, which isn't great, but it's a nice little card. And that'll likely bolster uh, the Italians because they're really getting their first turn of actually having to be in combat. For the Central Power side, you have the 11th Army, which you can basically stack with uh, Austrian corps, even could be uh, Turks. Uh, Race to the Sea, uh, and I want to thank John Sai because he's been commenting a lot on my videos and uh, helped me out with the rules. I wasn't sure on this card because the conditions for this card have already been met, so I thought, well, you know, how do you get it out of the deck? Well, you'll have to play it for the event. And it just doesn't happen in order to get rid of it. So that sucks, but i um, not sure if we'll do that just yet. But the conditions have already been met for that. Uh, Zeppelin raids, so get some uh, replacement points. Bulgaria, really want to get this one on the board. Couldn't do it last turn because of Italy coming in. So that'll uh, help on the Serbian front to get rid of what's left there. And then that'll free up some Austrian troops. And then Tsar takes command and Polish restoration. So along with some reinforcements. Uh, the Tsar will definitely come out. Polish Restoration, probably not, because you lose a victory point through it. Uh, so, sorry, it's the Allies first, and they are going to go ahead and do uh, the Italian reinforcements. I've actually already got them on the map. Uh, so they're going to come in, and they'll slide down in Rome, and that'll take uh, it over to the Central Powers, who are on the cusp, they're 18 victory points, just to give you a reminder from last time, there are some grabbable points in the north um, north side of the map, up in uh, the Baltic States, and there might be some opportunities to take on the British here in uh, Belgium and northern France, though I think that's likely going to be shored up. And if the Austrians can, and this is very <laughs> unlikely, if the Austrians can break through in Italy, there's some stuff. And I think really it's going to come down to how uh, well Russia holds up because Kiev is vulnerable, um, Vilna is vulnerable, and Riga. So that's three points. That's all they would need. They just have to hold on everywhere else, and then by the end of the turn, things would be over. So who knows? Um, there's definitely a possibility that the Central Powers can wrap it up, but if not, We'll just keep on trucking, so I'll bring the turns to you as they become uh, interesting enough to do so. Hi there, I'm here with you on the summer 1915 turn of Paths of Glory. Uh, went ahead and finished out the spring turn, absolutely nothing happened. So there was some moving around, some positioning of forces in the east as they raced for these victory point spaces. The Austro-Hungarians moved east because the Russians abandoned Poland basically and pulled back to guard Kiev so they repositioned their forces here in order to combat the Russians and then in the north as well they reinforced brought in some extra units and uh, tried to shore it up a little bit but besides that not much really happened most of the turn was spent playing replacement point cards bringing in reinforcements for both sides so it was fairly, fairly quiet nothing happened on the western front uh, the Austrians have two more armies that they brought in to go into Italy. The Germans have five replacement points, which they uh, revamped their forces on the Western Front because they think they have enough in the Eastern Front to either win or at least get enough. Uh, it's more about holding on to the Western Front, maybe grabbing Ostend or Amiens, we'll see. Uh, but at this point... Uh, not a lot happened, but I think both the sides are geared up to now kind of go for it. There might be one more lull stage just because of the cards. Let's show those to you now. The uh, 
Central Powers Hand ter Termination, Combat Card. Um, the Alpen Core, also Combat Card. Withdraw, Combat Card. German Reinforcements. Falkenhain, which is good to play. Um, I think actually the, the condition has been met for it. Uh, we didn't play it earlier, but uh, now it's back up. And Van Francois. And the 11th Army, which we held on for the last time, so not great. A lot of low cards. Um, the one high card is Falkenhain, but pretty much everything else is pretty low. So it doesn't exactly lend itself to being a very active turn. So it may be just pretty much the same moving forces preparing for what could be a big turn in the fall. For the Allies, uh, air superiority they held over from last time. Russian reinforcements. More Russian reinforcements. Grand Fleet won't be a problem because High Seas Fleet is in play. And other Russian reinforcements. Salonika. Severe weather. Salonika is the only one of all of the cards in either hand that's interesting. Could help out uh, Serbia, as was its intended target. Uh, could bring the limited entry of Greece, so not the neutral entry, but the limited entry. Could get some forces into that area. Bulgaria is in the war now, so that really just gives them a target, basically. So I haven't quite decided if that's something I want to do just yet, or if I want to put it in the discard and have it come up later. But uh, as it stands right now, both the sides kind of building to a climax. Not sure exactly when that's going to come, because it might not be this turn. Uh, both sides aren't still quite poised to do anything. The Austrians aren't in place to attack Kiev or Italy. The Germans are in the area to attack Vilna, but Riga is still a far target away. And in the Western Front, neither side has paid much attention just because the focus has been elsewhere. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the Turks have to make a mandated offensive, so that could be the first time we see any action um, in the Near East. And the Italians have to make a, an offensive, so that's probably not going to end well from them, for them, you'd imagine. All right, I'll bring you the turns as they become necessary. All right, we're ready for our first attack of either of the last two turns. It's going to be the push on Vilna to get up to 19 victory points. It's going to be two German corps attacking two Russian corps. Uh, the Russian corps have no attacking strength, so, you know, it's, it's just going to be the Germans trying to break through. But uh, either way, they're going to do a uh, flanking attack, attempt it, because why not? They can't do any damage back to you. Uh, the Russians were okay with conceding Vilna. Uh, probably not great, but, you know, it's easier to defend Riga than Riga and Vilna. Uh, plus, the German forces really aren't that strong in Russia, so breaking through Riga or Kiev, it's not going to be that easy. So, the flanking die roll, it will succeed, so the Germans will roll first, not that it really matters. They're going to get a 3. They're on the core fire table. Uh, it's two cores, so it's four. And the three is one. And I believe they get a plus one for the flanking attack, which will be a four. Um, but I can double check that, but I'm pretty sure uh, they get the plus one. All right, so uh, no, there is no plus one. Uh, and... I realize that people will catch me doing this a lot, but it's just because I'm playing two hands. The Germans are going to play Van Francois to add a plus one die roll modifier. Now, normally you can't roll the dice, go back and do that. Um, but knowing that Vilna is probably going to be one of the only attacks this turn, not really wanting to hold on to this card anymore, the Germans want to make sure that this attack goes through. So they are going to play Van Francois. Um, the allies will get to look and see if they have anything and they don't so that one will boost it to four which is enough to inflict two hits so if you were playing the supposed you can't roll the dice go back and look it's a bit cheap i know but not knowing that having to deal with two hands at the same time um not being able to sit there and evaluate well i got this this and this it's um, a lot so you'll see me do that sometimes disclaimer it's not allowed in an opposed game, but I'm doing it here. Also, it's my game, so I can do what I want. Uh, but uh, they're going to deal two hits. Uh, actually, they're going to deal uh, four. I don't think they actually needed the die roll modifier. Um, I guess they did still. Um, 
Yeah, they still did. So they're going to deal two hits now. Um, sorry, I get this game and Empire of the Sun mixed up where you're rolling to see how many of your hits actually hit. And in this one where you're just tallying up the amount of factors you get to determine how many hits you get. So it's a basic difference and I get tripped up on those sometimes. So the two hits are enough to eliminate both of these Russian units and uh, capture Vilna. We'll go down in the eliminated replaceable units box. Vilna will fall to the central powers. Full strength units can go in. It'll be this German core. While this one sits in Kovno. So that will push the victory points from 18 up to 19. And now the central powers, sorry, only need one more from anywhere on the map. Where are they going to come from? Yeah, who knows? It could be three victory point spaces are left in Russia. Three of them. Uh, in the Near East, Baku is very unlikely. Probably not going to come from the Near East. Italy, you have to break through this line of Italians before you can even get to any there. It's difficult. Western Front, pretty heavily guarded at this point. Probably going to have to break through somewhere pretty risky. And then hold on to it. That's the hard part. So, where that last victory point is going to come from, I'm not sure. Could it come from a card? Maybe? I don't know. Um, also... You have to remember that in the winter turns, the blockade is going to reduce it one. So uh, they could always go for peace terms, which actually may end up doing it. Uh, but, you know, it's always risky because you could end up losing one. So that could be the best bet for them. But we'll have to see over to the Allies. All right, so we're going to bring to you this next attack. Not much has happened. The Turks attacked the Russians and the Caucasus, but nothing really came out of it. Uh, so now the Italians are going to fulfill their um, mandif mandatory offensive. And it's going to be the Italian Second Army attacking this uh, Austro-Hungarian uh, Corps. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be flipped over. Uh, in Trieste, and it's going to be uh, two for the Italians, four for the Austrians, and they've got a core. So it's not going to go that well, I can't imagine. But, uh, you know, they have to do this offensive. So the rolls are two, three. And under the core fire table, they're going to be at a 4 for the Austrians. They rolled a 2. They're going to get to shift that over 1 because of the trench. It's still a 1. The army fire table for the Austrian, I mean for the Italians is going to be a 2. They roll a 3. But it has to be shift over this way 1. So that still gives them a 1. So the Austrians can't do any damage with their 4. But the Italians can inflict a 1 loss. So now the uh, Austrians uh, did lose the combat, so they should have to retreat. Now the trench is there. If they take the step loss, then they uh, obviously would empty the space out. So as far as I can tell, the Italians would advance in. I'm not sure because they didn't destroy it, but I think that they would just basically move in and besiege. I'm pretty sure is what would happen. I'll, I'll double check that, but the Austrians will retreat to Zagreb. This trench is removed. The Italians will move in, not capture the space. They'll just besiege it. So not a bad return. All in all, the 5th Army will then move to fill in. That's where they were going to move. I just didn't move them because I was doing the attack and they can't be involved in that. So, uh, not a bad return for the Italians, if they can actually manage, they aren't actually besieging it right now, I don't think, because they don't have enough strength to actually do it. So they don't take the space, but I guess they can still occupy it, but aren't actually besieging. I'll double check that, otherwise they may not even be able to advance in, but the point of this was not to take Trieste, it was to fulfill the advance, the, uh, the allied offensive that was mandatory so coming down to the last few turns uh, it's probably just going to be some general stuff and then we'll wrap the turn up 
All right, so here I am at the end of the 1915 turn, the uh, summer 1950 turn. Um, so things are still a little sluggish right now, which is, of course, very um, representative of 1915. Uh, in the year of the war, 1914 sees all these big movements and expands, uh, expansive movements. And then 1915 is very slow comparatively, and that's uh, reflected here. So both sides, the past two turns, both the spring and the summer turn. Heck, we might even play the winter turn. I've, I've kind of lost track now, but have not had the hands really to do anything. They've had some big cards, but they've been for good events like the Moltke, or sorry, the Falkenhayn card for the, uh, for the Germans. It's just not uh, congenial to having these large advances and... Uh, both sides have dug in. The Western Front completely static. No cards were played there. We showed I showed you the attack here on the Italian Front, and the Austrians did not come back in. The Italians moved an army, and so they'll have the opportunity to take Trieste, which would be nice because that's a victory point, and uh, of course a fort space that would no longer be able to be defended by the Austrians. But I don't anticipate that being too difficult for the Austrians to break through. Um, they don't have a lot of reinforcements at all in, in this game, so they're going to have to really get rid of the uh, the Serbians. They have committed a lot on the Eastern Front, but that could fall. So we'll see some action probably next turn. Uh, Serbia, by the way, is still holding on, despite the fact that Salonika was played. That did come out bringing in the limited entry of uh, Greece. So their forces are here now, which could set up a fight with the Bulgarians. And also the Bulgarians can help out in Serbia. So that's something to look for. Uh, in the east was where most of the movement happened. Nothing particularly exciting. So let me get you the whole thing here. The, of course, the Russians bailed and went east to protect these uh, victory points. So the Austrians followed in behind on their coattails. They've got uh, an attacking force set up ready to go into Odessa. And Kiev is also under threat from two Austro-Hungarian armies. The Russians had a reinforcement card that they played. They've got another one already guaranteed for next turn that they're holding on to. There are two Russian armies up in Petrograd, I believe is what that is, St. Petersburg, um, ready to reinforce Riga and to hold on to that. They've got an army down in the south to uh, help down here as well. Stacking limits are going to be a problem at some point, but, I mean, they've got the forces, I think, to, to perhaps hold on. That one victory point might not come from the Russians. Um, I'm not sure uh, the fall of the Tsar card has to be war status plus combined CP Russian victory points. So I'm guessing you add the war status. Um, I don't know if that means combined or only the central powers. I'll look that up. But that Tsar falls card may, you know, be what spurs on the action on this side of the front at this point because Neither of the sides, the Russians sure as heck aren't going to be doing anything, and the uh, Central Powers may have a hard time cracking this nut, because actually the Germans have no armies uh, committed to the Eastern Front. They are all core. Now, they, they do have five core committed there, and uh, three armies in the eliminated replaceable box, but uh, they don't have any actual armies committed there, which... You know, it's kind of a double-sided sword because they don't need any right now because there are a good number of core. And if you have three or four, even five core attacking in one attack, you've got some pretty good results on the core fire table. But, of course, that army fire table is really where you want to be. They can't divert any forces from the Western Front just yet. Once again, these are the sort of conversations I'd expect for the leading generals and the leading military strategists of the time to be thinking about. But... I can't yet commit any forces. We're still kind of between that Easterners versus Westerners debate. And I still think that because the West is so rich in victory points, we cannot afford a breakthrough there. We could hold on to 19 victory points. We're going to lose one in the winter of 1916. But if we can eke one out somehow in the next turn or two turns, then we win the game. I, uh, By the way, I mentioned peace terms earlier. I think that's a bit of a cheap way to win the game since I'm playing it opposed. If I was playing it, uh, sorry, I'm playing it unopposed. If I was playing it opposed, I probably wouldn't offer peace terms because my opponent might accept them um, and take a draw rather than what is looking like a loss for them. Now, you know, that's up to them. But if I was to offer peace terms and then the other team, the other side would reject it, and if I rolled and got a victory point for that, that'd be a really terrible ending. I feel like I'm almost obligated to bring you guys the gameplay because in the end, this isn't about beating myself. This is about showing you the game showing you something interesting, and ending it in peace terms just wouldn't be that way. So I want this to end 
uh, by one side or the other defeating the other side. So um, at this point I'm going to wrap this turn up and I'm going to begin the next one. I'll probably include that one in this video as well. We may run through the whole year of 1915 all in one video just because it's been so lackluster, not much going on. It's still been very interesting, very strategic. That's the thing about this game is it's not always as active as some other games, which makes sense. It's World War I, but all of it throughout gives you a lot of interesting decisions. It's a beautifully crafted game, and uh, it's been a lot of fun to play. So I'll bring you uh, the 1915 Fall Turn coming up next. I'll show you the hands. All right, so coming to you on the beginning of the Fall 1915 turn to wrap up last turn, uh, the did the besieging phase or the siege phase, and actually the Italians did manage to defeat the fort in Trieste with the roll of one. They got a victory point for that, defeated the destroyed the fort. So now the victory points are at 18 for the central power. So they got knocked back one. That's unfortunate, and I honestly could not have told you that uh, that would have been the case that the mandatory offensive for the Italians would have actually ended up perhaps turning the balance because looking at these hands. Uh, things are going to be interesting this turn. Let's just say it that way. I, I get giddy playing this game because every time I just look at the hands and then I'm like, wow, so many things can happen. Normally nothing happens, but you never know. Here's Russian reinforcements. They held on to this after last game. Czech Legion, this is an optional card. I'm not sure if it's just for the Deluxe or if everybody has it. If not, it's a very interesting card. You can remove a Austrian core and then have the ability to bring in the Czech Legion, which is a fantastic story if you've never heard about it before. Highly recommend you look it up. Land ships. This one's interesting. Allows a play of an event. I have not looked up why this is in yellow yet, but I'll do that. Allows for the Royal Tank Corps. Romania. Neutral entry. This opens up. This is kind of a double-edged sword as well, because it opens up two victory point spaces in Romania. Um, brings in the Romanians, obviously. Their troops are able to fight, and their troops are worse than the Bulgarians. So, if they come in, and now they're going to have their flanks exposed all around them, because the Bulgarians, the Austrians are on one side. That opens up two. So I'm not sure if I want to play it because the Austrians could always just retreat through Galatz to Bucharest and the Bulgarians could come up and that's your two victory points you need to win. The, the Russians can't really do much about it. If the Austrians leave a reserve guard, the Russians won't be able to say anything because there are no victory point spaces here. They're all up in here. So if the Russians fall back, basically hold their original borders and take Romania, game's over. So I'm not sure how excited I actually am about it playing this card. Um, and they have to play it before the fall of the Tsar, so that's one thing to remember. The Great Retreat probably won't be used because there is nowhere left to retreat for the Russians. This would have been nice last turn. The MEF, uh, this is nice because things in the Near East haven't really started yet, and as well as in Greece, so that could gear things up. And the Lusitania, this does um, allow it to be played. It's going to subtract another victory point from the central powers, move them down to 17. So that narrow window of opportunity that they've had to win this game has been around for about four or five turns now, and they haven't been able to seal the deal. So as long as stuff like this keeps coming up, it's going to be harder and harder for the central powers to win, which, like I said, I keep being amazed at how accurate this really is. The central powers were so close. I mean, they were literally on the banks of the Meuse right at Paris that close to taking it and weren't able to finish it off. Uh, same thing happened here. They literally got to Paris, never captured it, um, and were just on the precipice of winning. So Now over to the Central Powers cards. They're going to get to go first. They have Hague. Interesting little uh, card to throw some uh, wrench kind of in the mechanisms of the Western Front. Uh, Svan Sanders here for the Turks. It's a combat card. Severe Weather, another combat card. The High Seas Fleet. Um, the British had the Royal Navy, uh, there's another word, but uh, the Grand Fleet, that's it. Uh, it was played last time, so this, it won't be available to them. The Germans know that. So that's a one way to cancel out, basically, the Lusitania. Entrench, this has already been played by the Allies, so uh, the event won't matter. Uh, Walter Rathenau, interesting, and also bumps up the uh, the war status, sorry, and uh, is interesting for what it allows. They're going to get an extra uh, replacement point, which is really, really nice, actually. Fortified machine guns, uh, 
who knows if this will actually come out it's for a defender. So the, the one nice thing about this hand is it offers you a little bit more of a higher values. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. This entrenched card can be used for a 4 um, for a strategic redeployment. Uh, so that is offering some more things in the very limited hands we've seen from either side. The central powers are probably going to open up with a quick attack on Trieste and removing some forces in Russia or in the Baltic states and uh, the allies are going to be contemplating whether or not to play Romania because at this point that's a uh, could be a tipping point in this game. I'll bring it to you. Alright here's the opening play of the fall 1915 turn some action. The uh, Austrians move some forces in uh, Russia and this is going to be the, the big thing here. They're going to be attacking Trieste, trying to get that victory point back and uh, push back the Italians a little bit. Hopefully kind of give them a bloody nose and then find their way through some of these cracks here in this Italian line. We want to take it back first before the Italians have a chance to entrench especially because that one victory point could very well be a tipping scale at some point. So uh, it's going to be this um, unit will not be attacking. It's going to sit this out. So it's going to be the second army, an Austrian corps, and the seventh army in total for a total strength of seven. It's going to be against the Italian fifth and the Italian second armies for a total strength of four. Uh, will there be a, tacky, a flanking attack? Very tempting to do so. Um, they're not entrenched, so that is allowed. Um, you know, it's a tough one. Really want to get those in first. It's, uh, I believe, a four to six, and they get a plus one. Maybe it's five and six. Anyways, they're going to get a plus one to their roll. So, uh, yeah, I think they're going to do it. You're going to go big or go home. Okay, it's a six straight up, unmodified. So, they're good. And uh, so that means they'll get to roll theirs first. So, of course, the roll comes in, and it's absolutely abysmal. It's going to be a one on the 7, which is going to be 3, um, and they'll get to do those first. So it's going to be 1, 2 to reduce this, and the last one is unable to be uh, given up. So now the Italians will roll, and they're on a strength of 3 now rather than 4. And of course they roll a 6, which is just perfect. So on a strength of 3, a 6 is a whopping 4. So that's going to be flip this one and flip this one. And of course the Austrians will not be advancing into Trieste. They themselves are going to be the one with the bloody nose. Um, rolling terribly and then the, Aust the, uh, rather the Italians getting a very good roll. So really not ideal there. And this could give them the opportunity to entrench themselves now and try and just hold it out. But uh, as it stands, the Austrian army is not combat effective. Well, you know, was it ever? But it's definitely not combat effective now. All right, so after some contemplation, the Allies have decided to play the neutral entry event card. So Romania will come in. Both the sides are on 9 for their war status for a combined of 18 at the moment, just to keep you updated with that. And both also have the ability to move into the total war space this turn. We'll see whether or not they do, but they do, They both do have the ability. So the Romanians are going to come in, and this is risky because, of course, they're literally in enemy territory. They're being flanked from all sides. They have the Bulgarians to the south, who are better attackers than they are, and they have the Austrians to their east and their north-northwest. So uh, the thinking here is that there are some very rich victory point spaces inside the heart of Austria-Hungary. So if they can force the Austrians back, they either have to come back and defend them, or they have to lose those victory points, which would just be, you know, it's not, it's not a possibility. So that's going to move the front from eastern, uh, from western Russia, I guess, from the eastern front all the way back into Austria-Hungary. Right now those Russian forces are kind of pinned against the wall, and there's actually more than they can fight with. They're, they can't, they've reached their stacking limit for all those spaces that they're defending. So they have extra armies kind of just sitting around. 
they have to come in somewhere, and if they can spread them out onto the battlefield and let them fight the Austrians on a fair footing rather than on their back foot, um, then that would be great. So they're willing to risk a little bit. If both of those spaces fall, the game will end at the end of the turn. I think that they can hold out, because if the Bulgarians go in hard on the Romanians, that's going to allow the forces down here in Salonika to come up. So they, they can't go too hard because they're going to risk giving up Sofia. It's going to force the Austrians back and allow the Russians to be uncorked. So this combined, so the Austrians uh, having a failed attack in it, in the Alps or in Italy, which technically is Trieste, so Croatia, the area around Italy, um, that failed attack coupled with this could be that turning point in the war. That could be big. Now, it could go wrong for the Allies, and this was a terrible decision, but I think that there is a chance to turn things here in a in the Baltic front. You know, I figured that's one of the ones that gets forgotten about, uh, especially the fighting with Romania and Bulgaria. You hear about the Serbs, but not as much there. So I think this could be big time. I'm not sure if it'll work, but, you know, this is all about gambling. So we'll see what the Central Powers respond with. They'll have the first opportunity maybe to attack with the Austrians, but they'll definitely at least have the opportunity to pull back their troops. All right, so the Austrians are going to respond with the Hague card. Um, it's not really that useful because I don't think there's going to be much going on on the Eastern Front. It might be good to have it come up later. They're going to use it for um, the points to do kind of two movements. It's going to be one movement in the north to reposition some forces. They're going to move all of their troops here that were preparing for an attack on Kiev to pull back one, two, three spaces to Chernowitz. And then their forces in Limburg are going to move south. Now, I don't know if I can split these up and move one one, win, one, one way or one another. I'm going to say that they can for now, and I'll look it up whenever I pause this one. I'm not sure if they can verge off. I think they can, but, you know, well, I'll double-check that just for sure when I get off camera. The second part is an attack down here in Serbia. They want to get rid of these guys and make some progress here because... As it stands, they just they can't have two armies tied up fighting the Serbians. So they're going to go all in on this one. They're going to roll with a flank attack. It didn't work last time, but they're going to go for it again. They're going to have a plus one to their roll. This one's a five. Modified to a six. I should know where that is. Six. So they're going to get to roll theirs first. They're going to be rolling on the army table with a strength of six. So they roll a two. Even better. Just great rolls here. So six. On a 2 is going to be 3. That'll go 1 to here and 1 to here for the 3. And now the Serbians will fire back with 1 strength on the army table. And they're going to get a 2, so not quite as bad. 2. And a 2 on the 1 is only 1, which can't be dealt. So the Serbians will have to retreat. Um, well, they don't actually have to. They're in a mountain space, which I believe they can't ignore. Um, oh, actually, it's a mountain space, so flank attacks are not allowed. So these would be rolled simultaneously. So let's go ahead and back it up a little bit. Glad I spotted that. So they're actually going to be at a strength of 3. And a strength of 3 with 2 will be 2. And so the Austrians will still win, but it's going to be a little bit... They will have to flip one of their armies, so they will reduce the 6th army. So that isn't as good, but is what it is. Now, they do have the option to cancel retreat if they take a step loss. I don't know if it has to be a step loss from each unit or if it has to be a step loss from one unit, but they're just going to take the step loss. They're, they're just going to move, I mean, either way, because they don't really want to lose either of these guys, so they're going to pull back to Nis. And Valievo. Actually, I'm going to switch these up and let the unit in Belgrade take the step loss. Because only full strength units can advance in, and they're going to want the 6th Army to do that. So they're going to add, march into Vallejo. And uh, the Serbians aren't in good shape uh, as it stands, kind of hanging on. So now the Allies will have to decide if they want to run up and uh, help them out or uh, what they're going to do. But the Austrians pressing the issue in the right area because if they can collapse this front, you know, then maybe they could, maybe they say, forget the Italians, we're going to go all out in Romania. 
And I think the perfect response to this, honestly, is what I'll probably do with the Allies is to do another attack over here on the Italian front. So it worked, which means it probably won't this time. But if they can advance um, and do an attack on Trent with uh, these Italian armies here, there's not the numbers aren't quite the same, but if they could take Trent as well, and because uh, it's kind of weakly defended, knock another point off, have another area for the Austrians to have to, you know, take back, which they don't have the forces to do, opens up pass it opens up a path into South Germany. Now the Germans have to de deflect. That would just be really annoying. It's annoying for me because I really think about all of these countries as like their own. In my head, I have I'm not just playing two players. I'm playing each country individually, and that just enrages me to think that the Austrians are just, and it's so true to the re, in, into reality, it's just, they're such a drag. They can't do anything right, uh, not speaking of Austrians, of course, any Austrians out there watching, but Austro-Hungarians at the time, just the army is useless, the attacks have been useless, I feel like it's very, they, I mean, they, by the end of the war, the Germans were propping up the other two members of the central powers, the other two major powers, um, so just to, to think of having to divert forces to help out the Austro-Hungarians is just, just purely infuriating. So that's, that's a, I think that's probably a good idea for the Italians. It'll fail, I'm sure, and things will go poorly for them. But uh, the Central Powers have had a little bit of misfortune, and the Allies have had a bit of fortune. So also have to remember now that we've uncorked the Russians in the East. So those three armies are now completely free to operate. And they can just slide their way right on in back to where they were. Which now, the Germans are thinking, what are you guys doing? Like, we, we've had a plan here. You hold them in the south, we hold them in the north. We finish this thing off. And now you guys are pulling back. And uh, they're in an indefensible position. Because Chernowitz, uh, you have to guard Chernowitz and Limburg. So now the Russians are just going to march back to where they were at the beginning of the war. And all of that will be for naught. So it's just... You know, I thought this game was going to be a little bit dull. I had three turns in a row with nothing happening, but now that knife is just twisting and uh, opening up a whole new path for these sides to go down. So uh, really interesting here. It's going to be over to the Allies now. All right, so the Allies are going to do what I mentioned earlier. They, first of all, played the uh, MEF, which they actually can't play because it says place. Uh, it has to be played only if Turkey is at war uh, or before and before Sal uh, Salonika. So Salonika has already come in, so this event uh, actually can't be played, so they decided instead to go for the four. Pretty high activation number, or whatever it is in this game. So they, uh, whatever the term is. So they moved uh, some forces and kind of pushed back out. They're in between Chernowitz and Limburg, which is going to be awkward for the Austrians. But there's forcing the issue there. The, the idea isn't as much to we want these spaces, we have to grab them. It's that we want to make the Austrians uncomfortable. They don't have enough forces to guard everything, so we're going to make them choose what they want, where they want to defend. And uh, they've got another Russian army coming up behind that either can run in or can come down in support of Deza in a three-pronged attack involving the Romanians. But I think this is about to be the capitulation of the, of the Austrian army. And the big thing about this movement is, is by just sliding in to... Uh, Either one of these spaces here, or either any of those three, is going to cut off that Austrian army. So they're, they've are they kind of forced the Austrians now to have to retreat. Um, they're going to have to pull away their forces as well, I believe. And, uh, you know, now you're saying those both those victory points are now no longer accessible. Which is just, I mean, it's it's gone from the brink to, I'm not sure if the Austrian, if the central powers aren't going to be down to 15 points this turn, and then 10 the next turn. I mean, this could be... This could be the tipping point. But uh, the big part of this move is what I had talked about earlier, and it's going to be in the Alps. It's going to be a two-pronged attack by the Italians, and this is risky, remember. I don't think it's that risky because I don't think that there's much the, Ita the Austrians can follow up with. If this does go if this does go poorly for the Italians, the Austrians can't really capitalize on it. They're combat ineffective almost everywhere on the map. So this is definitely one of those places. So they figure it's a risk worth taking it's going to be the 1st and the 4th Army attacking an Austrian Corps. The strength for the attackers is 3. The strength for the defenders is technically 1 because of the fork. And they also have Entrench and there's Mountain Space, so they cannot be flanked. So we're not going to worry about that. Uh, both sides will take a look, because uh, I haven't been doing this, but I or I haven't done this yet. But they're both going to take a look to see if they want uh, to use some die roll modifiers, uh, some... 
combat cards, and the Austrians do have severe weather, and it is a fall-winter turn, so they could get a two-roll die roll modifier, and the attackers have none, so they're going to declare none, and the defenders really don't want to lose this space, so just to make sure that things go well for them, they're going to play severe weather, there it is, combat card, they're going to leave that one out, and defending units in mountain spaces in the fall or winter, or a swamp in the other's turns gets a plus two die roll modifier, so that'll be good. So it turns out to be a 5-3. It's going to be modified plus 2 to a 5 themselves. So coming over to the core fire table for the defenders, it's going to be a strength of 4. 1 plus the 3 for Trent being a fort, for being fortified, I guess. It's going to be 4, and they rolled a 5, which will be 2. They're going to do 2, and the Italians are on a 3 on the army fire table. They roll a 5. They're going to do 3. Um, the thing is, they have to shift, so I actually haven't done this yet. So the offensive fire is going to shift down 1, which still gives them a 3. But the 4 over here is going to shift up to a 5. So it's going to give them a 2 and them still a 3. So the attack actually will still succeed, even though things were not looking good um, at the start. So... It's two hits against the Italians. They're going to take it from difficult because they want to be able to advance in. So I think they're going to eliminate the 4th Army. They really want to be able to capitalize on this and get into Trent. So they're going to move in the 4th... Uh, the 4th Army, rather, is going to go to the eliminated replaceable box. They themselves, the Austrians, are going to take three hits. They don't have to worry about thinking if they want to retreat or what because it's going to be gone. This uh, trench, gone. And now the Italians will move on in with that full strength. Now, they don't have enough to besiege the space, so they're not going to take it. But they've got a core waiting behind here in Bologna to come up and support and maybe get that space by the end of the turn. So just what they wanted to do. They said, you thought things were difficult then? Try it now. I, I mean, what do you even do as the central powers? I mean, you went from having one or two fires to having the entire empire of Austria-Hungaria on fire. They've got to put out something here, they've got to put out something here, they've got all of this here to put out. They're just falling in on all sides. The only thing that's gone good for them is in this, uh, in Serbia, which, you know, it's probably going to turn against them here pretty soon, so I don't even know at this point. It's uh, not looking good. The, uh, the Italians aren't a huge threat. They still have to take Trent. Um, it could even hold out but uh, the Germans may be looking at this now and saying, okay, this has gone too far. We have to do something about this and uh, maybe have to divert some forces south. But it's, it's just snowballing into a terrible, terrible turn of misfortune after misfortune after misfortune. So we're going to keep going down this trail because it's, it's lovely. All right, so the Austrian player made their choice. They pulled back their attacking force in Odessa and then split the forces put their larger group in Limburg, the smaller force in Chernowitz. So the Russians decided to do something a little different. Rather than picking one of those targets, they're actually going to turn around and strike backwards at this Austrian force. Hit them while they're out and uh, see what the Austrians do afterwards. But thinking about, you know, coming down here, you could possibly get cut off. Coming up here, you could possibly get cut off. I think it makes more sense to take out this unit, not isolate these guys here, just come back and hit these guys on the hole. The uh, first thing we're going to do is move this Odessa force up. One, two, three. Take all of these spaces back. Thankfully, relieve some of the pressure that's been going on on those two victory point spaces. And uh, now we can launch this attack here. It's going to be a big one. It's not going to involve that force um, that just came in, obviously, because they can't participate. So it's going to be a lot. For the Austrians, it is, let me get out my toolbox here. It's going to be the fourth army and a core for a total strength of four against the Russian ninth, the Russian fifth, and the Russian fourth armies and a core. So it's three, six, nine, ten total. It's going to be ten against four, I believe. Ten against four. And the Russians are going to roll first. They're going to get a plus one. It's a five. 
modified to a 6, so they're going to get to roll theirs first. Rolling on the army fire table at a 12, it's going to be a 4. On, oh, sorry, a 10, excuse me. On the 10, it's going to be a 4, which is actually 5 hits. That's not good, so they're going to inflict those first. This is a legal space to do this in, because there are no other ones. So they're going to drop the 4th army down, that's going to be 2. This one down, that's three. And then they're going to hit the fourth army again, which will be five. And the fourth will be replaced with a full strength Austrian core. They'll get to roll. And they roll a two on the core fire table under one. That's nothing. So they're going to be forced to retreat, and I know that you have to retreat either the number of losses you took or the difference between the losses you did and anyways to a maximum of two maybe. Um, I forget, but uh, let me look that up. Yeah, so it caps at two. If it's more than one, it's five, for instance, which is what it is. They're going to have to just retreat two spaces. So they're going to move through Chernowitz. And they could cap off at Stanislaw, which is kind of pointless. They're going to go down to the south into this mountain space, hide up there in the mountains. So an absolute military disaster for the Austrians, which is pretty expected at this point. They get surrounded from two flanks, completely surrounded basically, and are obliterated. So it's going to be now the over to the Allies, and the Russians have got the Austrians on the run. You can see... There's four full-strength armies and two cores up against two full-strength Austrian armies. So this could go very badly and very quickly for the Austrians. And the Germans probably don't have enough time to get forces over there. Um, I don't even know what you do, where you get them from. They need reinforcements badly. They need those ones off the board because if they, they can either decide, okay, look, we're not going to win this game anymore. So let's go, we're not going to win it now. So let's go ahead and, and take forces from the Western Front and abandon Cambrai, abandon Brussels and Amsterdam, narrow the front, dig in, and just hold what we got on the Eastern Front. But I don't know if that's necessary yet, you know. These spaces aren't easily defended. I think that honestly, if they were to entrench in a couple of places, maybe they can hold up. The biggest thing is going to be changing the focal point of where everything's going on. If they can start a fire somewhere else that's bigger than the one going on right now, then maybe they can change the tides. But as it stands, this is not sustainable. The Austrians are going to completely fall apart here in late 1915. So over to the Central Power, a lot to think about. All right, back with uh, the Western Front now. The Germans on their turn did their mandated offensive um, with the Turks in the Caucasus once again, and uh, <clears throat> to no avail there. Then they decided to move in a German corps into Calais, which would get them up to 19 victory points. The reason being that they're uh, holding the high seas fleet. That would put them on 20 victory points for the win. Um, that forces the British to make a move, and the idea here is that maybe they can weaken this position because attacking Amiens or somewhere along the line here is too vulnerable. It just leaves spaces open where they're more likely to lose um, a victory point space and gain one, but the north is, you know, cut off because of because of the Netherlands. So attacking up here along this side is much safer. So they're hoping to weaken the position, and if they don't, they can at least maybe weaken on the ends and threaten there, uh, which of course leads to the, the possibility of getting cut off at Cambrai, but They'll cross that bridge if this if this works out. So the way that it will work out is it's going to be the third army of the British, two British corps, um, doing like a pincer attack against the Germans at Calais. It's going to be an eight strength on the army fire table, that which means that regardless of what the British roll, they're going to uh, be successful in eliminating this core. Uh, the core for the Germans can only do one if they do one. So the temptation is. Well, there's no need to roll uh, for the pinning attack because, well, you know, we're going to destroy them either way. 
um, the, the benefit of it would be if you do successfully do it, then you don't risk losing any troops. Because um, then if you take a step loss somewhere, you're going to be weaker, um, which is not what they want. So, um, I think they're going to go for it. Because either way, they're going to end up destroying this unit, so they might as well go ahead and at least try. So here's the pinning roll. They're going to get a plus one. And it's terrible. The allies never seem to have bad rolls, but they do this time. There's a one for you. So actually, as I destroy the Western Front, the allies are going to have to take their losses first. Which may not be a big deal. In the end, we could have skipped all over this. So not a great roll for the Allies. It's going to be I mean, for the axis of, for the axis of the Central Power. It's going to be a two. And on the two table, it's still a one. So that's what they wanted to do either way. Disappointing for the British. So the British have to decide where they're going to take this step loss. I believe. The defender is the one that picks, but I could be wrong. Um, either way, let's take a look at it from either perspective. Taking the step loss here is good because it weakens the side and you could possibly break through. Um, but this area here at Cambrai is very weak because there's only one army and there's two French armies facing off. So the ability for them to come in behind... Um, you know, it's dangerous. I don't think that there's enough there to actually push through and make that breakthrough. So in the north, it's more uh, properly defended at Ostend. Um, it'd also be harder to break through, and there are less troops. It definitely couldn't be done this turn. You'd have to wait till next turn and uh, get some replacement points in to be able to actually do anything. So it's a difficult one. Also, the north is more weak, so I think the, the more daring move is to take it from the south. The better move is to take it from the north, and I think they both agree that it's better to take it from the north. So I'll look that up and see who actually does the removing. But the British will roll now on um, a 7 instead of an 8, but it doesn't matter because it's still the same table. And they make no mistake, roll a 6 this time. And that will be more than enough to fully eliminate the German Corps. Retake Calais. And, uh, well, actually, I think it will remain... Um, CP controlled unless they send in a unit. And they can only send in full strength units. So that makes it very tough. Let me double check that first. Alright, so yeah, they would need to advance in in order to take it. Um, in order to take the space back from the central powers. And also they do get, I looked it up, they do get to pick their own losses. So, um, as far as I can tell, there's no, there's nothing saying that they don't have to move in. So... I, to me, it seems as though the space is not taken unless they physically move a unit in. So now they have to rethink that, because as it stands, they would have to either move in the army or the core and army ends, which they don't want to do either of those, because they're both terrible options. Um, so if they replace the core um, and make it back to full strength, and then reduce the one in army ends, they can move the unit in Calais, which now sounds like the better idea. It is actually probably better for them and worse for the Germans. So this will go back to full strength. And Austin will remain the same. Whereas this unit will be reduced. And this core will move in. And that will slide the victory points back down to 18. And uh, the it wouldn't really matter either way for the Allies. I mean, for the for the Central Powers, because uh, they had the High Seas Fleet, but the Allies have uh, 
the Lusitania. So it would have knocked it back down either way. But of course they couldn't have known that. So at this point, uh, there's a few more cards left. They're pretty much all going to be events. So we'll see how it pans out. But I don't expect there'll be too much more. The other thing that the Allies did with this card was they moved uh, an extra core down here into Trent to uh, be able to besiege it. So over to the eight, uh, the Central Powers now. All right, to finish out the turn, basically uh, the way things panned out, the Germans decided to play Walter Rothenau, uh, which will get them one replacement point every turn. Regardless, which is really nice. Um, the and also the biggest reason they wanted to play that was because they got them two on the war status, so that puts them in a total war. The Allies responded by playing the Lusitania, which knocked down the victory points track to seventeen. Also got them into total war. They want to stay toe to toe with uh, with them. So then the Germans had the high seas fleet. They thought about playing it. They decided instead to go with the replacement points to ramp everybody up. They got three for the Germans, which they really feel that rather than having that one victory point, they'd rather get those replacements. You know, their idea is the Western Front, but it may end up having to be on the Eastern Front uh, or on the Southern, the Italian Front now, so who knows. But at least it gives them options. Also got some for the Austrians, which was a big deal. Then uh, the Allies, having seen that, decided to give up their Russian reinforcement card and get replacements themselves because the Russians are not hurting for troops right now. In fact, they're going to be outnumbering the Austrians and the Carpathians uh, by four full strength armies to just two of the Austrians and no German armies compared to three of theirs um, in the north and the Baltic states. So those two extra armies will come up later. The same way with High Sea Fleet, they decided to let that come up. Um, at a later date, possibly when they need that one victory point, because one will make the difference here. Might it next turn? Possibly, but they couldn't hold a card because they used a combat card. So everybody did their mandated offensives. We uh, go to the siege phase right out of the attrition phase, which there is nobody um, out of supply. So we'll go on to the uh, siege phase, which I'll go ahead and show you. So they need um, a higher, a uh, number to break this uh, siege here, I apologize. Um, in order to break this, they're going to have to roll higher than a three. Had, the siege thing had slipped me for a moment. So they're going to roll a two, which this time is not enough. So uh, Trent will stay under central powers control for the moment, and the victory point will stay with them as well. And, uh, now we'll go on to the war status phase. Um, there is no victory, none of that, um, no armistice. And then we'll go on to the replacement phase, draw strategy cards, and all of that. So this is the way the board stands at the end of 1915. We basically have to go through the whole year here in one video. And you can already tell that things have, have ramped up. It's beautiful of showing you being a the mobilization to the limited war, and, and now we've really, we have entered total war with the war in the Baltics underway, and even in the Near East Front, we've even seen some action, and uh, maybe, maybe we could see more next turn. So this is the way it stands, quite a quite a few groupings of turns, especially this last one. I hope you all enjoy it. I'm going to run over to my uh, Empire of the Sun playthrough, I hope you'll check that out, that'll be a try and go one and one, and I'll return to this as soon as I get done with that one, so thank you for watching.